So tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And I've been thinking a little bit about love, of course. And in particular, some French philosophers and some of the things they've said about it. And I had this connection between three dead French philosophers. And it involves things like cheese and music and all kinds of stuff. And I'd love to share it with you. But first, I want to tell you where I got it. So I was reading from Blaise Pascal's, I think it's pronounced Pense. I don't speak French, but I think that's how it's said. Um, and that means thoughts. And in his thoughts book, and he was, by the way, if you don't know who he was, he was a, he is a famous uh, French mathematician, scientist, just a real prodigy and converted into uh, Jansenist Catholicism and then kind of devoted some of his thoughts towards theological works. I think the fa most famous of which was his wager, if you have heard of Pascal's wager. And, um, but I, I don't want to talk about that. I'd like to share one of his thoughts that really jumped out to me. Let's see here, it's on page 173 here. And he said this, he said, the greater intellect one has, the more originality one finds in men. Ordinary persons find no difference between men. I'll read that one more time. Because on a video, right, you can't really read this. But he said, the greater intellect one has, the more originality one finds in men. Ordinary persons find no difference between men. Do you agree to that? What I took from that was, what he's saying there is intellect definitely corresponds with the ability to to see and to perceive, to detect nuance, originality, and worth in, in this case, people, right? And failing to see those things, I guess not having this a greater intellect like he did, <laughs> um, you fail to see those differences and you're definitely more prone to prejudice and bias. And maybe that's circular. And perhaps you're clinging to a mental model that is comfortable for you, but it produces these inaccurate generalizations, forestalling access to what he says, seeing more originality in men. And um, a couple days ago was the Super Bowl. And so you could think about this high intellect as almost like a high definition TV where you can see all of the, you know, quote unquote, originality, all of the detail and richness and texture the grass and the, you know the players and all that stuff right and it's it's nice to watch but then imagine you know lacking that would be like going from high definition down to a, a standard definition and then maybe back to like how it was when i was a kid where if you got really close to the tv you could see like the the red and the blue and you know i think it's the green um i don't but i just remember being kind of pixelated and then as you reduce the intellect even more it's like sort of like a grayish black and white tv maybe from the from like the early 60s so ignorance is like the ultimate reduction of quality and so one thing we can do to kind of test out this principle and i promise we're going to get back to love so stick stick with me but one thing we can kind of do is and i like this we can kind of test if the logic is sound and we can swap out the nouns so instead of saying the greater the intellect one has, the more originality one finds in men, we can change out men. Say like we try something like wine or cheese. And I would say that makes sense, right? Let's put, let's put cheese in there. So the greater the intellect one has, the more originality one finds in cheese. <laughs> Original, or sorry, ordinary persons find no differences between cheese. And in that case, I'm more of an ordinary person. Like I know the difference between Mozzarella, because I love mozzarella. I know cheddar. Um, not really sure about the different types of cheddar. I know, you know, I, I like Parmesan. But then you go to the store, you know, you go to like a, especially like a high-end store. And they have like the Cheese Island. And all of those like big wheels of cheese and these names. It's like, I have no clue what you would even smell like or taste like. I would completely fail. And that's because um, I think... Mr. Pascal is right. I don't have this intellect, if you will, for cheese. 
my education, my cheese education is lacking. I'm ignorant. And so I find little differences between them. Um, and probably the same thing could be t said for wine. I think someone who's very educated, a high intellect with wine is called a sommelier. I believe that's what they're called. And they have this amazing palate and they can detect all the sudden subtle nuances of you know, the grape and where it was from and the fermentation process or something like that. But for me, I mean, I couldn't tell you the difference between, you know, what they mean. I'm just not a wine person. So I'm barred from enjoying the world of wine and cheese to their fullest. Um, music too. So before 2020, you could also say my knowledge and appreciation of Beethoven was, to use Pascal's word, ordinary, right? And then I stumbled upon a lecture by Leonard Bernstein on Spotify where he gave an analysis or a walkthrough of, I think it was his uh, Symphony Number no. 3, Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 3, the Eroica Symphony. So he would talk a little bit and then he would say, now listen to this and you would hear it and he would stop and he would pound it out on the keyboard and explain and that's what opened my eyes, at least a small way, to see more the magnitude of what an amazing genius Beethoven was. Because before that, it was more ordinary, right? I had a lower intellect. And, you know, you, you, everyone knows about Beethoven and you hear about him. Um, I know he's a classical composer, Mozart, but, you know, Haydn and that sort of thing. And so... So then I discovered his piano sonatas. And after that, it was like I was hooked. And I still listen to him. And it's one of those things you don't tire of. I, at least I don't tire of. So it's an education that I got, you could say, with Mr. Bernstein. And it wasn't one of classes or quizzes and that sort of thing. There was no test. He just gave me the, the um, intellect. Or, you know, he gave me the way to see or hear even better. All of the, not all of, but at least a part of the, the craftsmanship and just the, he called him that gigantic one. And I started to see what he meant. So I could now begin to see, going back to Mr. Pascal, right? I could now begin to see originality, whereas before with my ordinary understanding, I couldn't find much difference between him and say Haydn. And so I became more of a lover, right? So as my intelligence increased, I became more of a lover of his music, a real, a real fan. So let's talk a little bit more about how intellect and love come together. And for that, I'd like to bring in our friend, uh, Gabriel Marcel. I think I talked about him last time. But in his book, Man Against Mass Society, which deserves, I mean, there is so much in this book. But just to pick out one thing that I think connects... On page seven, he says, Between love and intelligence, there can be no real divorce. Such a divorce is apparently consummated only when intelligence is degraded, or if I may be allowed, the expression becomes merely cerebral. So I'm going to pause right there. What he's saying is, when intelligence goes from, say, like a, a human reasonableness, intellect, or intuition, you could think of it, down to more abstract and more of a rational sense of thinking. And love, too, he says. And of course, when love reduces itself to mere carnal appetite. But this we must assert, and as forcibly as possible, where love on the one side, where intelligence on the other, reach their highest expression they cannot fail to meet. Do not let us speak of their becoming identical, for there can be no mutual identity except between abstractions. Love and intelligence are the most concrete things in this world, and at a certain level every great thinker has recognized this or has had a presentiment of it. Okay, it's a big quote. I agree with him. I do think that love and intelligence move together. There's a song by the Beatles, right? To know her is to love her. And it's like that high definition, that high definition intellect. When you can see more of somebody, you can see more of the originality. And, and yeah, you can also see some of the bad things too, of course. I mean, that, 
that goes almost without saying. But they move together. So now let's let's go let's revisit Pascal's idea and drop in the word love. And here's where it kind of gets cool. So we're going to substitute the word intellect with love. Okay. So the greater the love one has, the more originality one finds in men. Ordinary persons find no difference between men. So now we're connecting this idea from Pascal about intellect and seeing originality. And then we bring Marcel in where he says between love and intellect, there can be no, or an intelligence, there can be no real divorce. They move together at their highest expression. They cross. Wow. That's, that's really interesting, right? Um, because now I think what's interesting is with this one word change, it's no longer the intellect that makes you sort of a ordinary, right? It's not a mediocre intellect, but it's a, it's a mediocre love. So we just changed the word love. We swapped it out. The greater the love one has, the more originality one finds in men. So now it's not a mediocre intellect that makes you ordinary. It's a mediocre love that makes you ordinary. So if that's right, and I think he's right. I think that's, I think that's a fair, um, what's the right word? So with that small change, we just swapped intellect for love. And I think it holds true. The implications are changed now. It's no longer a mediocre intellect that makes you ordinary, but a mediocre love. And if that's right, and I believe it is, great love in a person will make them not only able to see more, to see value in others, but it has this willingness to do it. And um, perhaps that's, that's really what makes love its own kind of genius in a way that reason doesn't. And I think it was Meister Eckhart, who was a German uh, mystic. He said that love has no why. But I think he means by that, now I'm bringing in a German, oops. <laughs> I was just supposed to be about French philosophers and nothing against German philosophers though. They're awesome too. But that love doesn't have its doesn't have a rational reason. Otherwise, it's not really love. Well, we kind of to wrap this up, we've gone through Mr. Pascal and then um, Gabriel Marcel. And I wanted to leave with one more French philosopher. This is from Ian McGilchrist's giant tome. This is volume one. <laughs> this is volume one. And it's, I mean, it's huge, but, um, a fantastic book that I will need many years to fully understand and read. But he quotes a French philosopher and he's talking, Ian McGilchrist, the author of this book, is talking about attention. And so he quotes uh, another French philosopher, Louis Lavelle. And he says, let's see, he says, love, said the French philosopher Louis Lavelle, is a pure attention to the existence of the other. It's a pure attention to the existence of the other. Let me backtrack a little bit and lead up to this quote. So this is Ian McGilchrist. He says, The choice we make of how we dispose our consciousness is the ultimate creative act. It renders the world what it is. It is therefore a moral act. It has consequences. Love is a pure attention to the existence of the other. So pure attention to the existence that just kind of sound when I, when I first read that, I thought of like a college student cramming, right? Just pure attention was like studying a book or, you know, scanning and trying to absorb something as best as they could. It could also be, I also imagine like a professional of some kind in a flow state where they're just perfectly have their, where their activity has their full attention. And they're, they're having this great time. Also, it could be two people on a date. They're not looking at their phones. They're looking at each other in the eyes and they're falling in love. 
each has the other's full attention, which I think makes love possible, right? And another example could be a parent listening intently to their child. It's that full attention. It's, it's one of these ways of, of manifesting love is giving that attention. So to wrap it up, right, we've gone from Blaise Pascal to Gabriel Marcel to Louis Lavelle, three French philosophers talking about intellect and love and what it means to know someone else. And so I think it, to sum it all up, it comes down to this. If you're trying to learn something and grow in your mind, or if you're trying to love something, it comes down to your most precious possession, your full attention. That's what it requires. And how we attend to the world, it's going to affect how not only what we see in the world or what we can learn, um, but it really affects how we love other people. So I hope that's something to think about in as you go throughout your day tomorrow in Valentine's Day or even any day, right? How I think Mr. McGillchrist is right, you know, how we attend to the world changes it for us. You know, it, it changes what's there. And in, in that way, it's creative. He's a genius of a guy. So till next time, I'll try to continue to do one of these. I don't know, maybe once a week or so. Um, what I tend to do is I read one thing and then my mind gets triggered and I try to go and I cross-reference it somewhere else and I start to see, hey, there's a relationship here. That's what I've always done. You know, as long as I can remember, I, I just love to make connections. But really what I love to do is have somebody to talk to about them, someone to share them with. So hence this channel. And uh, I hope some of these can be profitable for you. All right. Oh, and I almost forgot to ask, but if you, if you like this sort of stuff or you'd like to see different things or ha have me, you know, dive into maybe some more Marcel or one of these authors, comment, let me know and like the video, subscribe to it. If you'd like to see more, I'm going to, like I said, continue to try to do these on a more regular cadence. Thanks for your time and attention. You're awesome. Talk to you later.